where does your success end up as far as what you spend your let's just say what do you spend your money on like what is some passions that you have oh, that uh man well fishing a one there we go uh been fishing that's one thing my dad and i still have a bond about he doesn't fish anymore but uh he had us on the boat from two years old to until he got i mean it transferred from him not having a boat and me having a boat and then him coming out with me fishing's the only thing that keeps me and my dad remotely close at all I took my dad to squaw creek a lake out in uh, uh down 67 and my dad's had some phenomenal fishing over his life and we went and i had this hole okay you could put the boat you got a spot lock on the trolling motor so you hit a button and the wind can be blowing 30 miles an hour and that boat don't move at all so i had a hole where you could drop this drop shot down on a spinning rod i'm talking about you open the bell and let the fluke go down and before it hits the bottom you were bit all day and i and i knew this and i didn't go there often but i called the old man one day i said hey we stomped on him today come in the morning he <laughs> sat in the passenger seat of my boat and caught 150 bass by noon. He strapped his rod down and he said, I'm done. And I said, well, I'm not. This lake closes at three and we're going to fish till 259. And I'm just strumming them. And we load the boat up and we're leaving. And there's some things your dad tells you throughout your life. This was the most profound thing he's ever told me. We're, we're going home and he goes, man, I got to tell you, I am 70 years old and I have fished with the best and had some miraculous days, but I have never in my life dreamed of catching that many fish that fast. He said, you, you're, you're the best I've ever seen. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey. so fishing's, I, I like, uh, I like cars. I like boats. I don't like a lot of cars. I, I had a dream of having a Corvette my whole life. That, that was a dream. You know, I say I don't set goals and dreams, but that was a dream. And when I started making a little change, I was like, man, I still love Corvettes, but I like the mid-engine cars. You know, I like that that mid-engine. And I can't lie to you. Uh, I, I'm leaning on an Audi R8, a used one, because I can't afford a new one. So I'm, I'm looking at that. And two weeks later, Chevy announces mid-engine Corvette. <laughs> I'm like, oh. So you mean I don't spend two hundred thousand? I can spend seventy thousand and get everything I've dreamed of—a Corvette with the motor in the back. So I got that. We just spend a lot, you know, spend a lot on our kids, and we give. We still live in a little house. We still own the same house that we bought in two thousand thirteen. We're not trying to be in a mansion with three thousand square foot that we don't use. We got a nice backyard with a real nice pool, and uh, we live a pretty simple life. That's good. We don't eat expensive restaurants. We cook meals at home. So it sounds like you steward the success well, and you you don't. I'm not gonna say I'm perfect. Yeah, I've done some dumb things with some money. You know, early on for sure, more than now. I'd say three years ago, I went into a mode of trying to stack cash, and just uh, we eliminated uh, 90 percent of our debt in 12 months. All of our revolving debt, 90 percent of it in 12 months. It, it was just something that I wanted to do. And then when, when we and the crazy thing is when we relieved all that debt, the money we, I mean, it was just crazy how much money we were wasting service and interest on credit cards. Yeah. And, uh, we just diligently made the changes. So, uh, we're pretty frugal people. Uh, I don't own a suit. I got one pair of jeans. I got one button down shirt and two pair of R Watson boots. Other than that is dude shoes and t-shirts. Do you feel like dude shoes and t-shirts kind of connects you with the, your clients and the people that you serve at your, at your business? You know, I'm not day to day in there as as much anymore. I do handle the finances and the marketing. I don't know that my clients would necessarily appreciate it as much as my network. At this point, my network knows that if Corey's coming somewhere, barring a funeral, he's going to be in shorts and a t-shirt. I, I think honestly, so I'm successful, but if I'm sitting down at lunch with a guy in a three piece suit, I ain't comfortable. <laughs> I'm not. I'm just not. Yeah. It's not my gig. And I think I'm more approachable and easier to talk to because I'm regular Joe. I am no different than anybody else. I may own a business, but I don't want anybody to say, oh, look at Corey's got a thousand dollar suit all the time, you know, Rolex. I don't want 
to be thought i want to be thought of as just a regular guy yeah, that you can come and talk to and we can joke around and have fun and that that's just my whole persona i want to be approachable i don't want to be putting anybody off yeah, absolutely. If this is your first time here, I would greatly appreciate you to subscribe to the show. We're really trying to grow the YouTube. Whether you found us on Apple, Spotify, you can subscribe on there as well. And if you would like to support the ministry in any way, you can go to ilikeforhisministry.com and you can support us there financially. Or you can even buy our first book, my first book, 21 Days in Africa, uh, where it's about my mission trip to Africa. My man Corey bought one when he came out to Man's Night and it was greatly appreciated. 